Sal. It's Mill who goes back to Deja King. King guarded by Bautista, having to take a lot of minutes with Shaq Edwards out. They feed it down low for Griffin. Her shot no good. Ball still in play. Possession to stay with the Explorers. And they'll get the first points of the day thanks to Miller. Yeah, you know what, Dante? The Explorers, this has been one of the issues that they've had this year is they have not had a lot of consistency at the point guard position. As a result, Amy Griffin hasn't been quite as effective as she has been in the past, but still, it's been a strong year for the senior. She is the leader of the Explorers offense. Going into their first turn offensively, Brianna Cummings back to Bautista with 10 to shoot. Into the corner for Mahoney. As Tapia Strong's away, nothing there back to Bautista, who drives in and gets it up and in the floor for Malin Bautista. And you know what, Dante? That was Bautista's specialty on Saturday against Richmond. A lot of times she didn't have room to operate, but she found a way inside the creases of the lane. It's some running scoop shots, and GW gets on the board. Miller tries to answer with a three. It's no good. Tapia will get the rebound. She had four of them against Richmond. Early stages of this 8-10 matchup. Winner advances to Richmond this weekend. Tobias moves in, kicks out for Luma. The shot goes in and out. And LaSalle moving forward with Amy Griffin. And Griffin, and she's a senior swing player. Really tough matchup because she's six foot one, good scorer, good rim protector. He does a little bit of everything for the Explorers. Miller guarded by Tapias. Now Griffin almost double team with the swing wide for King. Inside down low for Miller against Luma. She goes up and gets it in emphatically. They all Luma got a piece of the rock. It's been fun to see the energy that Luma has played with defensively, especially on the rebounding side of things for GW recently. Double digit rebounds, three out of her last four games, but show her hands full because LaSalle does have some size on the interior. Tapias goes inside for Bautista, one more for Luma. And it's no good, but words of encouragement from Coach Jen Rosati on that one. A good shot take from Luma. She was open. Yeah, it was the same exact shot that she had the last time. It just didn't seem to go. Key for Luma and some of the younger players on this GDW team is not letting this game get too big. And a good job from Malin Bautista forces a turnover. Oh, man, rush Malin Bautista across. For Tapias, puts it up and in. Great play from Camila Tapias. As it all started with Malin Bautista forcing the turnover. And, a four. and I wouldn't be surprised, Dante, if we saw GW play some press early because the Explorers have one of the worst assist to turnover ratios in the conference. You know, their turnover margin minus six, and then a little bit after that. So they are last in the conference in that, too. So it's forcing LaSalle into making mistakes and utilizing the fact that they've had some inconsistency at the point guard spot this year and using that against them. The way basketball is, Dante, you can tell so much about a team based on what you're getting out of the point guard. Cummings to Bautista. Back up as there were two explorers waiting for it. Seven to shoot Bautista in. Floater off the bottom of the rim, no good. And they'll say possession to stay with George Washington with four to go. Yeah, that spot, Shalina Miller got a piece of the rock. It was a tough shot by Bautista with the shot clock winding down. GW is only four to shoot. Tapias inbounds for Luma with two. Goes back to Tapias. Long distance, no good. Cummings with the rebound. And GW will reset Mahoney for three. And it's good, GW. Up by three, a big three-pointer from Kelsey Mahoney. And you know what, Dante? Previous three games coming into this, Mahoney four of 21 from downtown. So it's good to see her get started early if you're a GW fan. The Globules by three. Miller down low. Draws the foul and one. As it'll be on Mahoney. And you see the aggressiveness here from LaSalle. You know, Miller, big bodied, tough, six foot two. You know, they make him tough in Philly, Dante. And she found her way to the rim, stayed in the area for college, and now LaSalle can even things up.
And they will tie us at seven. And now into the game, Kelly Prange and Jeff, it's been an interesting se senior season for her. You know, she had a concussion that cost her a lot of time. But when I think she could have let that concussion affect her and seen her season go off the rails, uh, she didn't. She got back into the swing of things, not long after she had the concussion, she had over 30 points against Rhode Island, and overall has been a productive force for GW off the bench, and she's the leading scorer of GW's second unit. Tapias Toluma with seven to shoot. Shot's no good. Peggy can't get there for the rebound, and it'll be Amy Griffin to swing things forward for the South. Tied at seven, almost midway here in the first. And see Malin Bautista going for the basketball. You have to be very careful. That's a tough matchup for Deja King, who's expected to see a lot of the minutes because Jack Edwards is unavailable. Griffin feeds it for Freeland, who gets the two to go, and it makes it a two-point lead now for LaSalle. Bautista to Cummings, and now to Tapias, the Bogota native. And then both, of, and both of her parents were here this weekend from Bogota for senior day. Cummings, Tapias open for three. And Kaylee Tapias with a big three. Si, senorita, as they say down south. I'll take your word for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for GW, you get 10 points in this first quarter. And for the Colonials on Saturday against the Richmond Spiders, Dante, they had three separate quarters where they were in single-digit points. Let's face it, it's very hard to win a game that way. That ball kept in but turned over erratically. Played fourth for Tapia's from Bautista. That all started with Prangy. Bautista inside for Prangy. Nice feed from Malin Bautista. And you know what, Dante? That's what GW can do. You make a mistake on the baseline like LaSalle did, forces you in a turnover, GW gets up and down the floor, and Bautista, such a good passer, connecting with Frank, a nice big target. Miller feeds it down inside, that's deflected by Cummings. And she'll get called with a travel, which takes us to a timeout. GW, up by three with 3.48 to go here in the first. <laughs> Especially with GW being a guard driven team, they can get up and down the floor. The size can help you for LaSalle on the interior, but they get out into transition, they can make things happen. Inside for Miller, who goes up, it's no good. They battle for it below, and it's Kelly Prangy able to get it to Malin Bautista. Let's report to Brianna Cummings. Open three for Mahoney. No Prangy there. Nice move, but not able to get the bucket to fall. Pretty good look at a tip in though for Frangy. Nice reaction underneath the basket and just pushed it a, a little bit too hard off the iron. That's Miller, it's no good. Goes back to Deja King. Now it's Amy Griffin. Over the game for Adriana Miller. And able to sink along too. You know what? Miller, she has had a, a solid season, you know, for the Bullets Alex Flores. 13 and a half points a game. You know, she's the top five all time in LaSalle and point and career points. And you know, she's another one of those offensive threats. You had her and Griffin that you're expecting to lead you tonight. Maybe Griffin called with the foul. And now Sophie Wafong into the game. From Silver Spring, Maryland, just down the road. Bautista open for three, and it's no good. Prangy almost got the rebound, but it'll be taken forward by Griffin, who doesn't leave the floor very often. Nice job deflecting that pads out from Kelly Prangy backtracking. And you know what, Dante? That is two great defensive possessions for Kelly Prangy in a row. You know, the last time up the floor, good help defense, and there, getting back in transition, deflecting the pass out of bounds. As somebody that is a senior on this team, she understands what you need to be playing for. I mean, she's been involved in teams that have won the A-10 tournament. Ball out of Brianna Cummings moves things forward. 
Now to Bautista as Tapia's gets set to come back into the game. This is Luxus Levy. Back to Mahoney. Bautista able to drive in, gets the floater up, no good. And the explorers get possession, it's Freeland. You know, GW has had some good looks at the iron, Dante, but some of them haven't gone in. I mean, Neil Aluma had two good looks at field goals. Those were her misses. Bautista, a decent look there. Frankie, a good look at a tip in just a moment ago. So GW is getting good shots, but you know, a little proud, but that might be changing. That one turned over. Frankie had to chase it down. Good job from the south back, tracking as Bautista runs into six foot four Sophie Wildfong. <laughs> Able to get back up. Well, Wapong, she provides some rebounding prowess, but at times, a little bit of a ball in a China shop. And the first time that George Washington and LaSalle met, we had the broadcast, and we were able to see what Wapong can do in terms of a rebounding perspective, but we also saw uh, those chinks in the armor every once in a while. She had 10 points in LaSalle's final regular season game against George Mason. Travel call against Lexus Levy. And think about it. They didn't have to go too far to get to this game. <laughs> you go from Fairfax to here. I would be surprised if they went back to Philadelphia. It's not that far of a trip from Philly to D.C. or from Philly to Fairfax. Uh, GW trying to get a win today over LaSalle. And a head-to-head -head that has pretty much swung GW's way both in the regular season and the postseason. GW leads it 35-5 to all time. As Wafong got double teamed down low, and the foul will be called on Lexus Levy, or rather Brianna Cummings. I thought you were right the first time. I personally thought they had that on Levy, but they're saying Cummings was the one called for it. Kevin Farlow on the call. GW almost three minutes without a point after a hot start to this one. It's a one point game, 12 to 11. Cross court feed for King. Guarded by Levy in the battle of two freshmen. A feed inside for Wapong as Mahoney goes down and an offensive foul ball. So Wapong comes in. You now we talked about it. Two fouls right now in the span of two minutes. And you see her backing in, but a good job by George Washington to take a charge, force a mistake by LaSalle. And now you have a chance to go two for one as you're inside a minute to go on first. Levy trying to ex extend the GW lead. Back to Brianna Cummings. Now it's Neil and Luma. Tapias. Goes Luma for two. And Neil and Luma showing some range there. Extends the lead to three. You know what? She's had four good looks. And finally that one goes in for Neil and Luma. And she, showed, she can work on the block, but she can also step out and hit the mid-range jump shot. Kind of like Kelly Frankie can. It's going to be exciting to see here in the next three years here at GW. Only a freshman. Deja King with 19 left. Feeds it down low. And able to get the roll in is Shalina Miller. You know what? Amy Griffin, I think GW knew, was going to get the top of the scouting report. But you got to take into account Miller, too. I mean, that's a couple of good buckets there for her. And GW gets in with the offensive foul, and you know, for, for Miller, I think it's going to be sort of like Griffin. You can't just put one defender on her. It's going to take a group effort. That's what head coach of the Colonials, Jen Rosati, was saying about Griffin. I think the same thing has to be true for Miller. Interesting play down low. They'll get the shot up in time and no good. It was kicked back in. Underhanded pass from Griffin. Takes us to the break at the end of one. It's GW up 14 to 13. We'll be back with the second quarter. You had Amy Griffin, just great size overall. Now here's Griffin on the handle to LaSalle. Griffin in the first with no points, but two rebounds to her name. Long three is drilled by Adriana Miller, and LaSalle retakes the lead. You have to remember this about LaSalle. The first time that they saw George Washington, it was a very close game at halftime. I mean, it was just a three-point ball game, and then GW did a lot better in the second, in the third quarter, where they out 
outgunned the Explorers 26 to 14. That defined the ball game, and honestly, Dante, that is the final South season. You're playing both teams pretty close for decent. Define the ball game, and honestly, Dante, that is the final South season. You're playing both teams pretty close for a decent. Griffin inbounds quickly to Freeland. Now it's Miller with seven to shoot. Out to Deja King, who's had issues with Bautista so far today. One, and she get it up in time. Yes, but it's no good. It'll be possession now for the Colonials. Brianna Miller, who's, or Brianna Cummings, rather. Think about it, that last rebound just a moment ago by Neil Luma. You're going right into Shalina Miller. Six foot two, good size, big rebound by, in that case, Neil Luma. Foul called on Griffin. I think it's been cool to see the way that Luma has progressed for GW, especially over these last couple of games. Jen Rosati told us before the game that she expected that Loma would continue to grow and develop, but maybe not necessarily break out quite the way that she has at the end of this year. As we see Cummings there on the nice inbound from Bautista with the pivot move, ties is at 16. GW showing a little bit of token pressure here. We saw a little bit of that in the first quarter. I haven't seen a lot of it from the Colonials in the game, though. Cummings there, almost able to intercept that pass from Miller, but they'll tip it out. It looks like Kevin Farla and Maggie Tienan talking things over. It'll be LaSalle possession with 16 to shoot on the shot clock. And LaSalle very fortunate that that didn't lead to a turnover. That was not a good pass. This is Rachel Brown from Staten Island. Goes to Deja King once again. Now it's Miller. That's a long three and it doesn't matter she's able to sink it top 10 all time in LaSalle history in three point makes and you know earlier this season Miller had kind of a, a revelation she announced herself as a scorer to her head coach Jeff Williams and she'll need to keep doing what she's doing in this ball game team leading by three now Cummings on a drive the floater high off the glass no good as it's Miller with the rebound, now it's Deja King moving things forward. 19-16, a score in favor of the visiting Explorers. He swings it for Brown. One more in the corner for Freeland. There's a foul call. And it'll be Jimmy Basketball. This one of six games on the docket today as we start the women's portion of the Atlantic 10 tournament. The two buys belong to Dayton and Duquesne. Tapia's inside for Loma. Goes back to Tapia's for three. Off the edge of the iron. And the rebound taken by Freeland. Brown for it. She's guarded by China Latimer. Making her first appearance in four games for the Colonials. That was a nice move from Miller away, and she gets the long two in and extends the lead here to five. You know, the thing about this for home team, the Atlantic 10 tournament, Dante, you have to remember, if you're if you don't buy in the first round, then you're playing at a campus site. And so for GW, I think one thing that they're trying to stress to their younger players is don't get too consumed by the fact that it's a playoff game to view it as a regular season home game almost. Mahoney for three. It's no good, but Brown not able to keep the ball on the court as it goes out of bounds. You know, I think kind of the same thing is for Dante for, for the road team, even though 
conference tournament. Most of it is played in a neutral site. It'll be at the Richmond Coliseum. The one thing you have to remember, too, is that even though it is neutral, it's still a different court, unfamiliar territory, a lot of people there. So it's a bit of a different environment, I feel, than, than playing just a, a true road game in the Atlantic 10. Cummings to Luma. Back to Brown and Cummings, who gets it up off the glass. No good, but draws the foul from Miller. And Jeff, we talked about it before. Brianna Cummings, the leader of this GW squad, is from last year losing the likes of Tyler Washington and Lexi Martins. Yeah, exactly, Dante. And you know, GW, I think they're going to see in this A10 tournament just what they are made of and kind of how can they translate what they did at the very end of the regular season into the postseason. They played really well defensively, issues with scoring. And this is the other thing I remember too, Dante, is that the South comes into town, but they have a four-point lead right now, and they have shown, as is something I think any coach would point out, that in a tournament setting, five versus 12 or whatever, any team can beat any other team, because even though you're at a campus site, there's still almost a little bit of a different sense to a postseason game. It's almost like a fresh season in a sense. So it's a three-point lead now for LaSalle after the banks from Cummings. She shoots 85% from the charity stripe. Almost forces a turnover there as the fans get into it. That pass down low for Wampong. It's no good. Bautista gets control for the Colonials. Directly offense opens for Mahoney as Frankie gets set to come back in. Cummings back to Mahoney. Now to Neela Luma. And she's feeling it. It's the two to go in. It's a one point lead now for the Explorers. Reached the halfway mark of the second quarter. And Amy Griffin just went over the scorer's table in front of LaSalle. Remember, she's playing with two personal fouls right now, so that's why they sat her down. Now GW's starting to move things forward, looking to take the lead here. Bautista, who's developed nicely in that point guard role for GW. She had 22 the last time these two teams met. And she gets fed inside. Face goes up. And the foul called. It'll be on Rachel Brown. You see Bautista is coming through the lane in that last spot. And good pass from Kelsey Mahoney. And that's how you effectively use a bounce pass there. And, and Mahoney showed it. Good chest passer, good bounce passer. Overall, just a, a great passer out of her position. And I imagine that your passing skills have to improve when you have Maylin Bautista to, to teach you a thing or two, because she's one of the best in, in the conference at doing that. So we're tied at 21. Bautista misses the second. And the full court press is on, and Bree Cummings able to make a big turnover for GW. Cummings goes up, off the glass, and in! Nice play from Brianna Cummings. She did that all herself. Six points for Cummings in the ballgame. You always have to be careful. With Cummings lurking in backcourt. Then when she's on the defensive side of things, too, how she crashes the glass. Three was no good, and now it's a rush the other way from Bautista. Really quick and aggressive. Don't look past down low for Kelly Pringy. And Jeff, you talked about it. Bautista's passing abilities on display there. And BW now in the middle of a nine to nothing run. Griffin settles things down. Miller, another long three. She airballs it, and it'll go out of play with 339 left in the half. And bring Freeland back into the game, and they're going to give Shalina Miller a little bit of a break. And the GW in a nice little run, and LaSalle has suddenly gone cold. It's been about three minutes since they have last scored some points. Need to settle things down to try and, and hopefully get back, even if you're the Explorers, or, or go ahead with the three and a half minutes left in the quarter. You don't want bad mojo going into halftime in the first-round playoff game. Kelly Prane, the mask 
Vasquez native to Mahoney. Interchanges with Bautista, who drives in. This is now Prangy wide open for three. And Kelly Prangy drills it. And a timeout called by Jeff Williams. That was all set up by Maylin Bautista. 12 0 run for GW. And in that spot, GW had just too much time to set things up for Kelly Prangy. Adriana Miller with 10. And here's Bautista going high to low in and Prangy. Remember, Three-second violation called on LaSalle, and it'll be possession back for the Colonials. You talked about it, Dante, valuing the basketball. The Explorers struggled doing that the first time that they played George Washington. In this game, they've turned it over nine times. That's their third turnover of the second quarter, and they had six of them in the first. So, you can pick things up. Bautista with a two-point, and she's starting to not only extend her prowess assisting, but adds to the score sheet. It's now a nine-point lead for GW. Going back to the turnovers, Jet GW best in the A-10. They only give it up 11 times. A turnover here, Cummings in. Fouled on her way up, and it's going to be called. <laughs> on Deja King, and LaSalle starting to lose it a little bit here in the latter parts of the second. GW 14-0 run, have made their last five field goals. And you're wondering, is this where the wheels fall off for LaSalle? Is this that time in the game where they're falling off? Because that last pass from Amy Griffin was completely telegraphed to Brianna Cummings. And to, to run the floor like that, I mean, Deja King, you have no choice but to foul on that spot. That's rare there from Brianna Cummings as she misses both. And you have a lane violation, Dante. So it's just, it's a focus thing almost for the Explorers. Turnovers, lane violations, that's unacceptable when you're in the spot that they're in right now. Cummings will make it on her third opportunity after the lane violation. So it's now a 10-point lead for GW, 15 to nothing run. So Dante, how many times do you see Brianna Cummings miss two free throws in a row? Not too often, giving the Cummings second in the A-10 and free throw shooting. Freeling shot no good. Bautista has the rebound. New York gave it, goes to Mahoney. It's no good. Deja King able to just get it out, but we have foul called on the hard charging Brianna Cummings. Oh. She'll take a breather. Camila Tapias comes into the game. They're just seeing for George Washington how badly everybody is going after those loose balls. And that can be an X factor in a, in a first round playoff game. And, you know, loose balls in the lane, you have aggressive guards that are good, you have a number of good rebounding guards like Cummings, like Bautista, and just trying to find ways to create opportunities for your team and not getting complacent with the league. That shot's no good from Griffin. Tapias to get the rebound. Talked about telegraph passes. China Latimer almost got in the lane for that one. Craigie. Back to Latimer. Her shot was no good, but Tapias was there. They'll go inside for Kelsey Mahoney. The one-handed layup is in. You know, if this was baseball, you'd get an assist for that. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it looked like a shot, but it turned into a pass for Tapias who created an opportunity for GW. So now it's Deja King. Under a minute to go, and GW with a big second quarter. There's a foul called on Mahoney. As the Explorers get set to inbound with 49 seconds to go, approaching six minutes without a point. And that pass way long, but able to race back and corral it was Miller. This combobulator of the Explorers, Deja King, now to Griffin. 
Back to King to try to keep it inside and then get it to Moa. Her shot goes up. And finally, LaSalle ends the streak. They get on the board. Shot clock's dead, so GW can settle things down. 20 seconds to go. Bautista, we've seen so far this season, she has a knack for halftime heroics at the buzzer. Eight to shoot. Bautista gets the screen. Goes back to Prangy, who's wide open for three. And Kelly Prangy drills it. And that'll take us to the half. A big play from Kelly Prangy, but once again, set up. situation she doesn't want to be in the double team right there and king wasn't ready for it there wasn't much that they could do about that and that's a credit to bautista and the tenacity she plays with she is good at handling the basketball she is good at taking the ball away from others gw shot near 50 percent in the first half tapias and now gw goes around the perimeter Mitches was spacing on this first possession, five to shoot. Bautista has to be her. Can't bank it home. Cummings gets the offensive rebound for GW and a fresh 30. So you go all that way down in the shot clock. And now if you're LaSalle, you got to get back in your defensive stance. That's a heads up play from Bree Cummings. She's been a force inside the paint all season long for GW. Really evolved her game well. Cummings. Leaves it short, and the rebound claimed by Shalina Miller. Miller played pretty well in the first half. She had 11 points, 5 of 7 shooting. And when she was able to get things going, she was finding a way inside. Here's Adriana Miller, a bump, and we'll go to the free throw line. Sal goes to the strike. Explore a 71% free throw shooting team on the season. As we told you earlier, this is the second meeting between GW and the Explorers this season. GW was able to win that first contest 60 to 45. It was the third quarter that allowed for GW to seize control in that game. But so far, the story of this contest has been how GW had a big run for roughly the second part of the second quarter. That allowed them to put up 22 points against LaSalle in the frame, outscore the Explorers by 12. And that is the GW lead right now. Neil knocks down a jumper from the angle. She's up mostly the mid-range shots in the game today. And it's interesting. It looks like she's getting more comfortable shooting those mid-range shots most of the season. She'll spend her time inside the paint, grinding out rebounds and getting second opportunities. Luma had three double-digit rebound games in her last four regular season contests, and Shalina Miller up to 13 points on the ball game. She leads all scores. Well, Holly thought about the three. Works against Ashanti Freeland. Now here's Tapius, the native of Bogota, Colombia. Luma looking for options. Bad miss on the jump shot. LaSalle transitions. Rachel Brown on the handle. Brown 
freshman from Staten Island. Running the point now, entry pass knocked out of there by Lumas. We've seen a lot of issues from LaSalle, Dante, on pass into the post. You've had the bigs trying to pass into the interior, and they haven't been very successful. No, they've had a lot of issues. GW's been able to telegraph, and we've seen Frankie do it a few times, able to get a tip on it. Shalina Miller misses the shot, and GW has the rebound. Colonials with a 12-point advantage in the ballgame. Largest lead for GW is 14, and Tapia is with a careless bounce pass. Looks like Perry and Bautista got their signals crossed. Brown knocks down the pull-up jumper. Almasal has made two of its first three shots in the third quarter. Uh, they're still down by double figures as we're inside seven minutes in the third. Bautista. Cummings into the lane, puts it in. That's just great confidence there from the senior Cummings evolving her game. She's moved up her points, average point per game into double figures from eight last year to 14 this year. 24 double-digit scoring games during the regular season. And Cummings, she reached the 1,000-point barrier for her career in her last game. Ditches into the corner. Mahoney can't put it home after a good pass from Cummings. And Cummings received a special 1,000-point basketball before the start of proceedings tonight. Griffin, that's a good pass into the corner. And an answer from Adriana Miller. Top 10 in LaSalle history in three-point makes. Cummings off the pass from Bautista. That's a beautiful job just answering LaSalle there. They've done a really good job of keeping... Amy Griffin in check. She still has no points in the contest. Meaning she's also playing with two fouls. And she is such a big part of the LaSalle offense. Offensive foul against the Explorers. They get it on Shalina Miller, and I think Miller is hurt. She's holding looked to be her right leg initially, and now the training staff will come out. Miller fell backwards. The chair was pulled out from under her. And the staff will look at Miller as she is lying on the ground. Into the halftime break. Right now, lead at 40. We'll take a timeout. Be right back. From the third, GW leading by 11. Scary moment. Not long ago, Shalina Miller was backing in from the block, went down awkwardly and grabbed what appeared to be her right leg. She has been led to the bench for the Explorers and being attended to by the training staff right now. She was able to leap to the bench, though, on her own power, so that's a good sign. Here's Brianna Cummings, fouled in route to the rim. We'll have to see if they tag this foul against Amy Griffin, and sure enough, Griffin, she picks up her third foul. So if you're the head coach of the Explorers, Jeff Williams, down by 11, do you keep her out there? I, at this point, you might want to try and save her for the fourth quarter with three fouls already. It hasn't been much of a threat offensively, but that's a credit to GW's defense. Just pulling her down, she hasn't had much of anything going offensively. Just a rough day at the office. Here's Kelly Prangy. Made a couple of threes at the end of the second quarter. Bautista against Rachel Brown. Ten to shoot for GW. Tapius. Dribble drive. And a foul is called. Brown is the guilty party here. That's the third foul against LaSalle in the third quarter. They have one to give with 4.59 to go in the quarters. GW leading it by 11. First round of the 8-10 tournament. Save loose in the lane. Wafong claims for LaSalle. That's a heads up play from Wafong. Just able to fall that one and quickly get it away to Miller before a hard charging Cummings got her hands on it. Foul is called, and 
This is against Amy Griffin. So we were asking the question a moment ago, Dante, do you want to keep Griffin in the game playing with three fouls? They elected to do just that. And actually, they said it was against Maitland Bautista. So Bautista's called for the foul, her second, but still Griffin, number 21 in blue. She is playing with three fouls, something that Coach Jeff Williams needs to be mindful of, and Sal also needs to be mindful of the turnovers. That's the 13th that they have committed in the game. That's just a bad pass from Griffin, and Brangy with his face, he's through the right to Brangy as if she's one of her own teammates. Taffy is to Cummings, and now Loma. Nine on the possession for GW. Cummings against Griffin. Drive and kick. Baseline setup. And it goes down for Aoloma. Well, Sal has not scored anything in more than two minutes. Offensive foul against Griffin. Now she has four fouls. 3.49 left to go in the third. And Coach Jeff Williams not happy with that call, and neither is Griffin. And I wonder if Williams knows she has four fouls because we still got a whole quarter of basketball left to play. Jules Gallion made the call. So Griffin gets subbed off for Deja King, who's had her own issues in the defensive zone more so. Cummings with the basketball. Right now it's showing that it was signal as an offensive foul, but Griffin is still listed as having three fouls. Mid post for Loma. Well defended by Wafong, no foul call. And LaSalle has got the rebound. So I have to check on that. As it shows, just three fouls for Amy Griffin, so maybe we can get clarification. Three is up and off target for Adriana Miller. One and done for the Explorers, and here comes Malin Bautista. And now they finally updated. They have said Griffin four fouls. So we had it right the first time. Now the question is, if you're Jeff Williams for the Explorers, how do you handle it with, with Griffin on the bench? She hasn't had much of an impact in this game. No points. But still... You probably want somebody with her experience out there in the fourth. Yeah, you know, when talking with Coach Jen Rosati, she said they spent a good amount of their time prepping in this game for Amy Griffin and what she brings to the fold, one of the better players in the A-10, and they have done a good job neutralizing her offensively. She's just not had a very good game here, and a really big game for LaSalle. Yeah, 13 and a half points, or I bet your part, 15 points a game for Griffin, just outside the top 10 in the A-10. Frankie does her work at the free throw line. GW's lead is 15 points right now. Colonials have scored the last six. And now some pressure at backcourt for GW. King, Adriana Miller, blocking foul here against Kelsey Mahoney. Mahoney's dealt with foul issues all game, her third. Inside of three minutes in the third. And a technical foul has been assessed against Adriana Miller. GW comes over towards their bench. So Mahoney gets called for a personal foul, and then Adriana Miller gets called for a technical foul. So GW will go to the free throw line here, and they will like to have Kelly Prangy shoot these technical free throws. She shoots it at just under 80% for the year. So Frankie makes the free throw. Just been a, we talked about it, that one quarter that usually has cost a sound game, and it might be this third where everything's really starting to fall apart. I still hold that it's probably, unless LaSalle, has a big comeback in them, which 
If you look at the games that they have played this season, they, they haven't had one of those. I think the, the final story will read, big second for GW sends them to Richmond. 17-point lead for the Colonials. This is their big advantage. Freeland. Here's Brown. Elbow jumper. And banks it in. That's a good job from Brown. Lots of confidence there. He got one of the best in the eight. We're not trying to leave anything a chance here. GW trying try to extend their lead. China Laver has seen some minutes today for the Colonials off the bench. GW goes around the horn. Six to shoot. Cummings. Pitches. Healthy three. Bautista misses. And the tip controlled by LaSalle. Adriana Miller. And it was deflected, and they're saying out of bounds by Cummings. Kevin Farlow comes in, though, and says to Maggie Team in the official on the baseline that, in fact, it's a LaSalle turnover, and they changed the call. That's good teamwork by this officiating crew. Jules Gallion, Maggie Teeman, and Kevin Farlow. Inside of two minutes to go in the third, Colonials with a 15-point lead. Work it to Prangy, who can work inside and outside. Latimer gets to Bautista. No look pass for Cummings. Puts it on the deck. Sandwiched in. And a travel against Cummings. 134 to go in the third. As we said earlier, the winner of this game plays either George Mason or St. Bonaventure. Mason, the four seed. The Bonnies are the 13 seed. And at the moment, Mason enjoying a nine-point lead on St. Bonaventure late in the third quarter. Rachel Brown has run the point today along with Deja King. Really challenging task when you're asking two freshmen to run the point guard spot in a playoff game and an up and down by Adrian Miller. Yeah, when you're missing a player, the likes of Shaq Edwards is out. It's been a tough day, and GW is really... You gotta give credit to them and just picking up an attack. And you got two freshmen out there on the point. You got Malin Bautista and Brie Cummings, two of the better defenders in the conference. Along with Cam and Tapias, it's just been a tough day offensively for the sound. That's what you expect when you play GW. You expect good defense. Bautista. Cummings, the tip in and the foul. Johnny on the spot. Thanks to a 17 point game. And that's another thing that we've seen from LaSalle in this game. Off of some of those misses, nobody rotates in, protects the weak side, and so an easy chance for Cummings. Oh, yeah, GW started to expose that. The rotation has just been off today for LaSalle. Remember, it was something that Jeff Williams told us the first time that saw the Explorers earlier on in the year. Pull-up jumper is good from Rachel Brown, and that is that his team is not rebounding the basketball very well. Probably average in the conference, and that may be a little bit worse, but today LaSalle, after they started the game off rebounding the basketball fairly well, had not done it really from the second quarter on. 25 seconds to go in the third. Luma. And a bad pass for Bautista. GW turns it over. That's a tough play there from GW. They don't turn it over much. Only 11, they average 11 a game. That's tops for lowest in the A-10. It's the lowest in the country. Fourth in the country in fewest turnovers. 32nd in turnover margin. And they just don't make a lot of mistakes for the basketball. But that's what guard play can do for you. 10 seconds in the quarter for LaSalle. Entry pass into a sea of white, intercepted by the Columbians. Bautista for Frangie. What a game it has been for Bautista. Passing the basketball. That is her eighth assist of the game. And as we go to the fourth, it's GW front running by 17.
from the field is not scored and is fled. Lena Miller has 13, but one of the bigger storylines in this game, Amy Griffin 0 for 2 from the field is not scored and is playing with four fouls, but Griffin at the controls now as we start the fourth. Baseline drive by Rachel Brown. Put on the floor by Miller. Shalina Miller off to Amy Griffin, a rib robber. And GW claims. Uh, that's the story of the day there for Amy Griffin. I mean, that's a perfect shot. And four times rolling around just finds its way. Yeah, but it's also good to see Shalina Miller back into the game after she had that injury in the third. It appeared to be a right leg injury. She was led to the bench, came to the bench under her own power, and you're right, encouraging for the Explorers. They look for whatever offense they can get. Frankie with 16, that jumper wide, and the loose ball claimed by LaSalle. Brown gets to the hole and lays it in. Brown with eight points on the ball game. And now we see a little bit of press from LaSalle. They did a lot of this last year, the Explorers, where they bring full court pressure, but because they don't have a lot of depth this year, they haven't been able to do it quite as much. Cummings rejected by the underside of the rim. LaSalle basketball. I can see that's just a good job from LaSalle with the pressure, but GW, of course, is ready for one of the better coach teams in the 8-10 when you have a, someone with the resume like... Jen Rosati leading you. You're going to have one of the better coached, well disciplined teams. They're very formulaic in what they do. And right there, you saw Reed, Reed Cummings still had an opportunity, even though they were taking on the full court press. And they're also a smart team as well, Dante. And that's what I think has you thinking to yourself if there's a team that can maybe challenge Dayton, it could be GW. You definitely have to look at the Colonials as one of those teams that can go on a run down in Richmond. GW finished the regular season about as strong as any team. GW enters tonight, winners of three out of their last four ball games and six of their last eight. Did fall to Richmond on Saturday, but today, the much better offensively Cummings and one. Rihanna Cummings, 15 points on the ball game, and she'll go to the line for the old fashioned three point play. It's just been a storyline all season for GW is Brianna Cummings and the evolution of her game, a defensive prowess that's almost unmatched in the A-10, and she started to add the scoring touch to it as well. I think it all started for Cummings when Jennifer Rosati said to Cummings, be more unselfish. It's okay to do that. And she said to us the very beginning of the year, I remember one of the early games that GW had that we were broadcasting, that you know they had to convince Cummings, it's okay to score. We expect you to score, and some of the younger players expect you to score too. Griffin, short corner jumper. Again, it misses. Rebounded underneath by Deja King. Bautista is there, ball is loose. And Bautista, they're saying, goes out of bounds. So this remains LaSalle basketball with 7.37 to go. You can see right there, Deja King just having trouble handling the pressure. She was almost triple team there, and GW almost walked away with the basketball. King on the handle now. Lobs it at the rim. Mahoney deflects, ball is loose, and Luma has it. You gotta be smarter than that. You can't make a pass like that and do a double team. That's like, we got a quarterback throwing the football. You gotta look for yourself, look for another option and avoid the double team. For this year, that was Blake Bortles all the time. <laughs> Bucket scored by Kelsey Mahoney. Sorry if we offended any Jacksonville Jaguars fans in the building. <laughs> 18 turnovers in the game for the LaSalle Explorers, and GW has found a way to translate those turnovers into points. That's been a big storyline of the game. 10 second violation against LaSalle, didn't get it across. Yeah, that, that's all on Brown there, and the pressure from GW and Malin, just nothing was going. They had no option wide open, anything. Just a credit to the GW defense, and when you get down to these stretches, defense is going to be one of those things that's going to push you really far once they get down towards Richmond. 
Altista calls out directions. Very vociferous point guard. China Latimer puts it in. Nice work by Latimer on the baseline. I think Jen Rosati was catcalling to Kevin Farlow. There should have been a foul there, too. But GW will take a 22-point lead, and LaSalle gives it away again. 6.20 to go. Bautista. Latimer for Mahoney. Dagger. If there was any doubt, timeout by Jeff Williams. 6-12 left to go in the ball game. Everything going the way for George Washington. Colonials looking to move on to the second round of the 8-10 tournament. Second, close in the third, but GW now on a 10 nothing run. And as we're almost four minutes into the fourth quarter, the winner of this game plays either George Mason or St. Bonaventure at the Richmond Coliseum. Right now it's the Patriots up 72 to 61. So you have another chapter in the Revolution rivalry as it's known. Elbow jumper. And this is short, played by China Latimer. And George Washington, and when we last updated, it was Mason leading. Cummings goes to the free throw line. Two head-to-heads for GW this year against George Mason. Both of those were win. Colonials defeated the Patriots at home 62-52 on January 7th, and then in Fairfax 65-61 on February 7th. One more for Brianna Cummings. And that free throw is down. Of course, the team that everyone will be watching out for in the A-10 tournament, a club that you always expect to get to the championship game, the Dayton Flyers, who will check into the A-10 tournament with a 22 and five Record. They'll be the top seed. Can't be put home here by Shalita Miller. China Latimer has got it. And they were receiving votes in the top 25 poll. Winners of 16 of their last 17, if you can believe that or not. Yeah, their senior day was spoiled by St. Louis, the final, the final regular season game. St. Louis might be a team that you watch out for in the tournament as well. They've won really good point guard. Nice scoop shot by Kimmy Tapias. That's the nice thing about the 8-10. You can look down 1 through 14, and on any given day, really, any team can beat anybody. You can go back to Rhode Island, he sits in last. They gave GW a run for their money back in January. Little tip drill. Shalina Miller gets a hold of it. Jump ball. GW will have it on the alternating possession arrow. We talked about it, Dante, in a one good point guard for St. Louis. And, of course, that's Jackie Kemp, one of the best in the Atlantic 10. And that is kind of a tip term. It's where you start to look to your big-time players to turn things on in extra gear. And in the game today, Dante, GW has seen that from Brianna Cummings, Kelly Frank. You've collaborated on 34 of GW's 66 points. Fourth. Season, which was 30 earlier this year against VCU. Taylor Campbell in the game now for GW. Nice ball movement. Trangi half down and out with that shot. Kelsey Mahoney fights away the offensive rebound and a fresh 30 for GW. That's just GW the will to compete even now with this sort of lead. It's just been overpowering so far today. And you know, Jeff, we talk about it. this season's a marathon. It's going to turn into a sprint in a couple days in Richmond. Trangi, short corner. And it's claimed by LaSalle. And I would expect that Jen Rosati would 
probably talk a little bit with the younger players about handling the Richmond Coliseum. Whistle on a foul with Rachel Brown driving the basket. She said she didn't really address it with some of the freshmen on the team before this game just because it's a game in your home court. It feels like a regular season game. But when you go into that high-charge tournament environment, neutral court, lots of people there, would be surprised that was something she and other coaches across the A-10 address. Tipped home by Griffin, Amy Griffin. It took all the way to the 345 mark of the fourth, but she finally has her first field goal. Uh, that's very wise coaching from Jennifer Rosati, just treating it business as usual. You know, we're playing at home. We don't have to travel anywhere. Just treat us the same, and then once we get down to Richmond, we'll talk about what's expected to come. Levy, no. Brangy an offensive rebound for GW. Thinking factors. Second quarter has to be the biggest one for GW. Were they able to surge ahead? But getting points off of turnovers from LaSalle and rebounding too for George Washington. That has helped too. Yeah, we saw in the Richmond game they had trouble inside the paint. They were held to under 15 today. 28 points inside the paint. And you noted, Dante, as we called that game on Saturday on the A10 network. Something that you were going to be focusing on for, for George Washington today. You know, what did they need to do to win this game? Points in the paint. Luma is too strong in her free throw. And it's amazing to think that on Saturday, George Washington, in three different quarters against the Spiders, was limited to single-digit points. It has certainly not been that way today for GW, who... Is in the middle of a 15-2 run over the last five minutes. And the credit as well, they have done a job capitalizing off of turnovers. As we've seen so far from LaSalle this season, you talked about it all game, Jeff. Turnovers have been a big issue for them. They have 21 turnovers. GW has 27 points off the turnovers. Timing can be everything in broadcasting, and I think you picked just about as good of a time as you possibly <laughs> could to address turnovers. Off the miscue from LaSalle. Campbell from Frankie. Travel, or beg your pardon, three second violation against GW. That's on Campbell. We don't see her very often inside the paint. It was an area she wasn't used to making sure she had to get out of. She did see some expanded minutes on senior day this past Saturday against the Richmond Spiders. Griffin for three. 67 to 42, GW, 2.15 to go in the game. Now, four seniors on the Colonials team. And I think Jen Rosati told us before the game, GW head coach, is you have to also convince some of your younger players that you need to, to play for yourself and to keep the team moving forward. But you also need to not forget those four seniors, especially the way that they have had such an impact on the younger players, just like the the group of seniors for George Washington did a season ago. Yeah, and it's, it's a trickle-down effect. You want to play for your seniors, you know, this is their last home game. We got all the festivities done with on senior day, but this is it. This is the final time that you saw Kelly Prangy take a seat. That was fun. That was the final time she's going to take a seat at home. So you want to go out there and send them out the right way with a trip to Richmond. Levy with four to shoot, turns it over. Inside of two minutes, all semantics at this point. Probably unlikely that George Washington would play in the WNIT, but they did have a WNIT game last year against Navy at the Smith Center. But GW with a thought of grander things, as they will be the team with the mark on their back, the number one seed of the tournament. We'll have to see if GW or some other club can take them down. Griffin deflects on a run out with Levy, who fouls from behind. And that's a heck of an effort from Lexus Levy. You know, the game's out of reach now. She could have just let it go to the fly, but the commitment to just continuing to play a full 40 minutes is something we've seen from GWs throughout the season. You know, you can go back. This schedule for them has been absolutely brutal. Job. We've been going through thick and thin the Paradise Jam, so... It's just been a credit to him to grind out this schedule. The, the non-conference schedule was 
incredibly brutal, but they have stuck it out. They drawn themselves in five seed, and they really put their stamp on this game after a rough loss to Richmond. GW seeing 12 postseason teams this year who played in the postseason a year ago. And then five teams that were in the NCAA tournament, Syracuse, USF, Maryland, Dayton, and it prepared them well for the A-10 season. The start, it might have been a little bit of a struggle, but GW certainly finished the year strong. They won six of their last eight, and two losses in the month of February. Tapias with a little bit of help from the rim. And when things are rolling your way, they are rolling your way. That's a heck of a bounce for Camila Tapias. Drive here, and a feed underneath for Shalina Miller. Jump ball. Remains with LaSalle. 39 seconds left. Jeff Williams, I think for the Explorers, the head coach, he knows that better times are ahead for his team. And they'll try and get healthy for the next season. Griffin getting some garbage time points. And what will be final game that Amy Griffin will play in her great career at LaSalle. A three and a half second differential between shot and game clock. Tapians for China Latimer. Latimer got rejected by Freeland. A baseline inbound for the Colonials. And looking like the GW's opponent. In the next round will be George Mason, 89-77 lead on St. Bonaventure with 31 seconds to go. Latimer, no good. Shot clock is off. Let's see if LaSalle tries one more just for kicks. Amy Griffin, she's earned it, and she makes it. 3.4 seconds left. George Washington is headed on in the 8-10 tournament. They take down the LaSalle Explorers.